I met a gypsy. When when you um when you did that first Loretta's was that like the first time where you went okay I could be a professional at this because you've probably got one of the gnarliest most roundabout stories to being a factory Honda rider in 2019 mm. of, yeah, of yeah. anybody like it's such yeah. a crazy story to come from where you come from like it yeah. it, it might even be underappreciated bro like, yeah it probably uh, is underappreciated <laughs> yeah. No, I, I had, I, being a professional supercross racer wasn't even on the radar. It seemed like where I grew up, arena cross was the big thing because the opener of the arena cross series was in Des Moines, Iowa every year. Uh. So guys like Jeremy McGrath and those guys that I watched on TV uh, at the supercrosses were just complete cartoon characters. They were, did they exist? I don't know. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it was that far fetched for me. Yeah. So it was almost like I couldn't even dream that big. That's how far away it was. And then I got to to go to the arena crosses a, a couple of times. I'd race amateur day, and then we'd go Saturday night to watch the race. So I looked up to, uh, one of the guys I looked up to grew up in the same town. It was Chad Pedersen. Yeah. He rode for Pro Circuit for a couple of years in Supercross, and he was winning arena crosses. And then uh, like Denny Stevenson and Buddy Antonez and, like those were the guys that I looked up to because that seems Bud so cool. Yeah, Budman's <laughs> awesome. I mean, Budman's single-handedly one of the biggest reasons why I'm sitting in this chair talking to you today was fast forward a little bit uh, in arena cross. I ended up being teammates with him, ah. and um, he took me under his wing and saw something that I didn't even see. And um, well, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. What really made me realize that I could potentially do this was I was a senior in high school. And we showed up to the Des Moines Arena Cross for my first ever pro race. And it was... Were you just the star of school at that point? Or did uh, no one even know you were doing not it? Not even... They didn't even really know. I mean, my close friends did, but yeah, yeah I'd race local races and win and whatever, but it wasn't that big of a deal. The, yeah. the bigger deal was the high school quarterback or yeah, the yeah. good baseball player, you know? Yeah. Uh, Which was Nate Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I showed up, we just showed up out of the back of a box fan. And when I say I was on a stock motorcycle, I was on a stock motorcycle It was stock pipe, stock suspension, uh, Hondas. So I was supported by a local Honda dealership, Storm yep. Lake Honda in Iowa. And, um, uh, we showed up and I was throwing up in my helmet during practice. I was so nervous. Really? And, uh, it was the year Damon Bradshaw came back. So it, it was just, there was a lot of guys. I mean, the list was long that year of Stevenson and uh, Budman and Bradshaw and a lot of Supercross guys would come race because it was in November. Yeah. So I ended up being fastest in practice. Uh, and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, I think there was almost 200 entries to that race. And um, so it's faster than Damn, that's a, lot of he- a lot of my heroes. And we went there thinking I wouldn't even qualify we'll just get some experience. It'll be cool to race in front of a crowd. Yeah. So then the heat race, uh, I hole shot, Bradshaw passes me. I pass him back and win the heat race. And there's still no a photo. Shit. Yeah. There's still a photo of me where it says the rookie passes the veteran. And I, I give Bradshaw crap to this day. Cause I just, I mess with him about it. And, um, the main event, I led the main event for a little bit, ended up crashing. I think I got sixth or seventh that night. And right then, uh, I was like, for one, maybe I'm better than we think. For two, these are my heroes. Like I was faster than my heroes. I was completely out of shape. Like I had no business doing 20 laps on an arena cross track because I didn't really know what training was at the time. And and um, so yeah, then fast forward a couple of years, I ended up getting rookie of the year that year in arena cross. Then I graduated high school. My parents basically said, uh, we'll support you for a year. So I moved to California. I loaded up a U-Haul by myself, didn't know anyone in California, drove out there and lived with a guy that my parents actually graduated high school with from, from Iowa. He lived in Anaheim and, um, some friends in and amongst, uh, our family kind of lined that up. So I called him and said, Hey, you sure you don't mind me sleeping on your couch for a few months? He said, no, absolutely not. So I loaded up a U-Haul and I cried for probably four hours of the first four hours of the drive, this 24 hour drive from where I lived. Um, I was leaving everything I thought at the time, right? I had a high school girlfriend. I had, um, my, my family, everything was comfortable. I was winning local races and now I'm going out into this big world of Southern California 
so yeah, so I loaded up and I rode Lake Elsinore every day and, and, um, and, uh, ended up the, that next year being teammates with Buddy Antones and Bud man totally took me under his wing and, uh, we just had so much fun. I was teammates with, uh, Buddy Antones and Brad Hagseth that year. And those two guys still to this day are two of my favorite people. I just, I learned so much from them. I was 19 or 20, maybe even 21, I forget, but, uh, and hanging out with these two guys in arena costs, like I just learned so much good and bad. <laughs> I learned oh, yeah. some things, what not to do and, and most things what to do. And, uh, then in 2004, uh, fill and ride became available with the, what is now Geico Honda. Um, so factory connection Honda team at the time, Bud man called me and said, Hey, I just got a call from Eric Kehoe. They're doing a tryout this week. It was the week after the final round of arena cross. Yeah. And, um, you should come out and at least try. And I had never ridden a supercross track before. Uh, so when I would race arena cross, I'd literally just show up and we would just ra- we would race, you know? And most of the time it was when I, I was, um, off the couch because I couldn't ride in Iowa. Yeah. Cause and, of the winners. Yeah. Cause the winners, uh, that, but when I was in Southern California, we'd just ride like I'd ride Lake Elsinore motocross track and then go race arena cross on the weekend. So Budman uh, took me to the Honda test track and um, yeah, I had a tryout and I'll never forget it. I mean, it was like yesterday, but I was riding uh, Billy Leninovich's practice bike and the team was out there and they, uh, I remember the suspension guy after I did some, some laps, he's like, all right, can you do 15 laps? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> This is, this is going to be bad. So I just, I kind of gutted through it and got done and they said, all right, you want to race St. Louis this weekend? And I said, heck yeah, really? So they just had me out there. I don't know if guys rode the bike the day before or what, but, um, so I ended up getting that fill in ride and, um, I flew out the next day to St. Louis Supercross and it was when they had Friday practice and Saturday race. So I remember getting all my gear and helmet and everything shipped to the hotel and um i put on all my stuff i was I, gonna say yeah it was just oh hotel, it was amazing it was so amazing good. but what's crazy is that feeling still hasn't went away i'm 35 when i get new gear and new helmet new boots like i just i froth on it like i i love that um so yeah budman got me that kind of first fill-in ride and then he was kind of like my acting agent for a while because he was in that yeah that kind of field of work and um ended up getting a two-year deal with motor world it was motor world suzuki at the time but that fill in ride uh helped me get that do you remember the first like your first laps around the supercross track yeah yeah i was like a fish out of water yeah did it yep. feel super weird yeah super weird uh and then i mean for half the day i didn't even jump the triple really yeah well that was so the day before i did the the tryout thing Budman brought out his 250 uh four stroke practice bike for me to ride on the track just to kind of get the track down and um yeah, it was bad. It wasn't that good. <laughs> it wasn't that good at all. But I, <laughs> I, I just quickly learned. That, yeah. 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 I quickly learned kind of how to do it. And, and, um, yeah, just the jumping and stuff kind of came natural to me. It was more the timing of it. Like, wait, so I got to jump from here to there and I can't over jump it and I can't under jump it. Yeah. Like, all right. So it was cool to have a, a kind of a coach and a teacher in Budman. He had say, been like, there and yeah, done that. And yeah. Yeah. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.